half happy, half sad, a vase of flowers. The vase is half empty with water. I guess it references that metaphor of is the glass half full or half empty? And the flowers in the vase, some of the petals have dropped off. I mean, that's all I can tell you about it, really. You know, it's a mixed, mixed metaphor, maybe. That's kind of part of my thing. When I make statements, you never quite know whether they're metaphorical or literal. And that's the way I like to use language that is sort of ambiguous somehow based on idiomatic use of language or metaphorical use of language versus literal use of language and then something in between. I guess none of these other three images uh, kind of function like that. They're not metaphors. Flowers, I wish they would be quiet. I don't know. I guess I just made a drawing of some flowers which all had faces on them, which appeared to be saying something. Yeah. I uh, re-elect the duck. He has done a good job so far. I was kind of hoping that that wasn't read as an endorsement for Donald Trump's presidential election campaign. But yeah, I don't think it would be. Visit the desert if you want to visit the desert. I like the desert. I've not been to like the desert where camels live. Well, I don't know, do they live in the desert? Like the Sahara sandy desert. I've been to the high desert, which is like Joshua tree in California. That's a really beautiful place. I love that. But the desert that I'm depicting here perhaps is uh, maybe the Sahara desert or a desert like that. I'm not really very familiar with different types of desert, but it's not. It's not, perhaps not entirely necessary if you're a visual artist. But it's useful to know. And I, I should know. So maybe we should re-record this. I'll go Google it now. <laughs> because I want to appear intelligent or, you know, well-informed. Maybe we should talk about something about which I am better informed. So this is... Um, This is a wall of uh, paintings on paper. I've never done four rows before. I've always done three rows, so this is quite a departure. Quite a big, bold statement. For the Danish audience, I feel I should explain this one up here that says, Ploys halt me. I guess this work is about me writing something phonetically, and it's supposed to say, please help me. But if you speaking in a weird accent, I don't know what accent it would be, but you say, please help me. <laughs> and to, to, to me, that is <laughs> amusing enough to make a painting about it. Yeah, everybody speaks differently, don't they? I used to live in Glasgow for many years in the west of Scotland, and the Glaswegian accent, the Glaswegian way of speaking English is somewhat different to other parts of the UK. I mean, English people find it very difficult to understand people from Glasgow. Anyway, teenage girls in Glasgow are completely incomprehensible, even to, like, adults in Glasgow, you know. They sort of sound a bit like they're speaking Japanese. It's, they, it's like that. It, it doesn't make any sense at all. I think teenagers kind of have their own language anyway, don't they? They try to interact with adults and younger people as little as possible. They just interact with themselves. And presumably nowadays, not even with themselves, only via social media or the internet. But anyway, if you haven't been to Glasgow, go there and hang out with some teenage girls. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. So anyway, there's uh, other images here. Some sort of abstract images. I've always been very keen on abstract art, abstract expressionism. Early Willem de Kooning, for example, would like that work. But I find it very difficult to make abstract art. Like, it's impossible. It doesn't seem to fit within the way that I make pictures because I'm a figurative artist, I suppose. I make pictures of things and I use words as well a lot. This one, for example, if I took the text away, that would be a bit like abstract expressionism, wouldn't it? Obviously, I can't resist the explanatory text. It says, you must accept this. It will not change. 
I guess I like words and I like the way that words describe pictures or the words kind of fail to adequately describe the pictures and the way that the pictures somehow fail to adequately illustrate the words. That's kind of part of my thing. So yeah, I guess there's a sort of process of trying to make everything really minimal, say very little, but somehow say something profound at the same time. Um, like this one that says, be quiet, stop thinking. There's very little information there, apart from the words, very little visual information, apart from, you know, being in opposite corners. You must accept the things that can't change. Which brings me on to this work here. Give me the courage to change the things that can be changed. And give me a massive bar of chocolate. This is half of that uh, kind of truism, isn't it? Give me the courage to change the things that can be changed. Um, give me the humility to accept the things I cannot change and give me the wisdom to know the difference between the two. I think that's the, maybe is that the aphorism I'm looking for? I don't know. Anyway, obviously I've changed it because of um, the presence of the massive bar of chocolate in my picture. I like making pictures of chocolate because I like chocolate. I really like chocolate. But since I've been coming to Denmark, I've discovered really good chocolate. And the bar's been raised really high. Crap chocolate isn't gonna do it for me anymore. Crap British chocolate. I need artisanal Scandinavian chocolate preferably made on the island of Sealand and preferably chocolate that's won awards at the European Chocolate Awards or the World Chocolate Awards. That's the kind of chocolate that I'm talking about. Never been to a chocolate awards show. I, I don't know if I'd actually want to go to one. I mean, unless I was actually making some chocolate that was... A, um, that was um, <laughs> that was at the awards. Funny, funny, funny you should mention that because um, in my shop, Shrig shop in, here in Copenhagen, we did a collaboration with a Danish chocolate manufacturer called Friesholm, which is fantastic chocolate. We made a chocolate that was called, um, chocolate is not the problem, you are the problem. And um, I made the packaging for it. Obviously they made the chocolate, the chocolate was nothing to do with me. But it won a bronze medal at the European Chocolate Award. I think it was for dark chocolate. But anyway, I was very proud of that, although I can't really take much credit for it since I had nothing to do with producing the chocolate itself, only the packaging. But nonetheless, I was very proud. Um, unfortunately, we're not making it out at the present time, but it is still really good chocolate. I am here. Tell the other birds to fuck off. <laughs> Mm. Birds, I like birds. It's a big bird. It's a big bird. This image I'm here, it says, just a medallion and nothing else. I guess that means that it's a naked man, presumably, who's wearing just a medallion and nothing else. Weasel infestation is no laughing matter, yet the weasels all appear to be laughing. <laughs> weasels. Uh, all rodents don't have many muscles in their faces, so they're not really capable of smiling or laughing. I mean, they could laugh, but they couldn't really smile. I mean, the only muscle I think that a rodent has in its face, apart from its eyelids, possibly around its ears, are its jaw. They're not able to smile in the way that we are able to smile, like this. Smiling is a very human thing. Again, I'm not talking from a position of expertise but as far as I'm aware it's pretty much just humans that can smile I think I think primates can smile and gorilla can smile um but yeah most other mammals no smiley so this is the giant loves the temple but he is clumsy he is also very clumsy it's a Japanese temple, perhaps, from Kyoto, which is a place that I would really like to visit, but I haven't managed to get there yet. And I love those temples that they, seem, they have there. I've seen pictures of them. They're really great shapes. It's 
So here we are in, in another room in the exhibition, and this is a, a painting, uh, a collage, actually, of the Statue of Liberty, what appears to be the Statue of Liberty. At the top it says, is there liberty? Poses the question. Further down it says, no, not really. Not really. Disappointing. Collage is a new thing, yeah. They're not collage with found images. I paint on thin paper and cut it out and then stick it onto thicker paper. It's a nice way to make pictures where you can have much lighter layers of things on top of a darker color and it's still very opaque, which essentially is kind of why I quite like it. I was just trying to make things slightly differently. The last thing you want to do is bore yourself. Other people can bore you. Don't bore yourself. If you've got a choice, there's no excuse for boring yourself. Not what I intended, not what you wanted, but I sincerely believe that we will both come to like it eventually. It seems to be a sort of theme in the work of just advising the viewer that they may come to like the work or at least accept the work. There are always instructions there. Look at this. I mean, that's sort of the basic demand of any picture, isn't it? That it be looked at. So basically, I've, I've, I think I've made a, quite a few pictures with this statement in it or this request in it. It's a bit like saying, this is a picture, you know. This is really essentially all you're required to do is look at it. You don't have to understand it. You don't have to like it. You just have to look at it. And you don't even have to look at it for very long, you know. That's fine. That's enough. Um, cloud of stink. You must pay to walk through it. I don't know what kind of stink it is. I'm, it looks like it could be some kind of cleaning product because it's blue. I mean, perfume is usually on the kind of red side of the color spectrum, isn't it? Or perhaps, yeah, I wouldn't want it to be brown or yellow, but you know, I'd say perfume is more pink type thing. More often than not, the image comes first, but a lot of the time it's just a process of sometimes writing lists of things, writing words down and then starting to make some pictures and then somehow applying those words to the pictures. But usually it's just a desire to fill a certain number of sheets of paper with images somehow. And the only requirement is that they're somehow finished at the end of the day or at some point in the future. So maybe, I can't really remember how these works came to be, but they, um, I guess I just sort of, um, Maybe I thought they would be backgrounds or collages or something before. But then, um, yeah, they just somehow seem to become a statement in their own right. I don't really think about it too much. My working method is to spend eight hours in the studio with a lot of materials and just work for the eight hours and then see what happens. You know, the things that influence you are sometimes potatoes. I've been trying to eat more gluten-free, like no bread recently. Yeah, I've been thinking a bit about potatoes. This picture is probably, again, a desire to make an abstract picture. And then maybe just thinking about, well, does there always have to be words? Words are so um, are an easy way to describe things. So maybe try and describe it with a picture. So I did this drawing of a person painting the picture. So it's sort of like a, an image that contains a document of its own creation or a document of the process of it being created. So it's almost like it could be some fractal type thing where you, you look closely at this and there's another little man, a much smaller image of the little man painting the picture and then, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I couldn't be bothered to do that. I don't, you know, my I didn't have my glasses, so I just did the one. Anyway, uh, problems. The nature of the problems, probably various size of the problems varies. The problems are all contained, which is reassuring. If all the problems are contained within the one picture, that's surely not that many problems. And they're all of a manageable size, I think. 
Even this problem, the largest, I don't feel like such a big problem. I think it's fine. I think the problems are all right. We can deal with those. And sometimes it's really just about how you look at the problems because you can see it. Some people see them as problems. Other people see them as opportunities, challenges. I don't see them as challenges. I see them as, you know, just problems. Fine, don't worry about it. Are they even my problems? Not anymore. I'm going home on Saturday. Doesn't look like anything. Doesn't mean anything. I guess I've been talking a lot about abstract art and that's essentially what abstract art is. That's what abstraction is. Something that doesn't look like anything and doesn't mean anything. And it kind of looks nice, you know, it's interesting. It's another collage, blue and, and green. Um, so these are just statements. I suppose it's sort of a bit like a serif version of my own handwriting somehow, or a stylized version of my own handwriting. I do it with ink, with a flat brush. Sometimes you can just say something like conceptual art. You just make a statement and that's enough. That's what conceptual artists do. Often the images describe themselves. Not funny, not clever, not interesting. Maybe that's not entirely true, I don't know. It's really subjective, but art is subjective. So maybe it's, you know, addressing that irony of it being an artwork. Thank you for sending the email. I have not read it yet, but I probably will do soon. That's a bit like saying nothing. That's non-correspondence. And who am I saying that to? Who is saying that to whom? Are they just thinking it, maybe? Is it even worth saying that? No. Sending an email because they're saying sing the email, so I wouldn't be emailing that response. How would I be saying that? If it even, if in, indeed it is me that's saying that, maybe it's you that's saying that to me. And I'd be saying to you, why the fuck are you saying this to me? It's pointless, man. Everything is right where you left it. So this is sort of like a um, universal statement, a kind of positive message, something reassuring. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Don't touch the fragile glass ornaments, you clumsy bastard. Perhaps that's like something you need to remember. Maybe I'm speaking metaphorically, like, um, the fragile glass ornaments are not actually fragile glass ornaments. They're just things that you shouldn't touch, things that you shouldn't interfere with or address, like um, uh, people's sensibilities or um, spiders' webs that are made of glass. Anyway, um, this is a picture of a horse. One is invited to imagine that this is a statement made by the horse. The horse is quite a pleasant color, a nutty brown with a bit of indigo. Sun on the back is all I need. I like horses, although I don't really hang out with horses very much. I certainly don't ride horses, I'm too big, and that would be unfair on the horse. Um, now I think about it, I think it's just unfair to ride a horse. Does the horse want you to ride them? No. I mean, everybody knows that, right? The horse just tolerates you. Just the fact that he doesn't throw you off and stamp on you when you're on the ground. That's just... The horse has just come to the conclusion that that wouldn't be a good thing to do. Doesn't mean that he likes you or she likes you. I think they probably... They just tolerate you. The only way a horse is going to like you is if you leave the horse alone. Just let the horse run about in the countryside unmolested and do its horse things, eat its horse stuff, foraged, whatnot. And occasionally you might interact with the horse out in the wild, just as equals. You'd be like, all right, mate, how are you? And the horse would be like, fine, <laughs> thanks better than I would have been if I was kept in captivity by 
a human being like you and ridden around a track for your amusement. Fuck that shit. I'm better off here in the uh, Camargue region of France where all my horse friends. But we all instinctively know that, don't we? Still, fuck us. And doing things with horses. It's another problem. Problems are just relative, aren't they? There's just events that you assign to be problematic. Sometimes they can just be beautiful. But What do you think of this picture? I already told you. I think it's but beautiful. People reveal themselves slowly. That's the title of this exhibition and a literal illustration of that statement. But, you know, the literal, that's usually not what people usually mean if they were to say something like that. What they would mean is you meet somebody and they seem like an asshole when you first meet them, but then you realize they're not. You realize that they're really lovely and that you want to get married to them. Or alternatively, you think they're wonderful when you first meet them and you get married to them in haste and then you regret that and have to change the situation. So that's what that, that works about. Pig on the ceiling, am I dreaming? No, you're not dreaming. There's a pig on the ceiling. Acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared, approximately meaning that the giant nut will plummet as all objects heavier than air will plummet, I think. Physics was not my strong suit at school, and it still isn't. I especially don't understand quantum physics. Cannot get my head around quantum physics. I bought a book about quantum physics once, but I just didn't read it. I cannot remember what it was like before the candle was lit, and I cannot imagine what it will be like when it goes out. Yeah, I mean, that's obviously a metaphor for existence. But it could just be a statement about candles. Oh, that particular candle. The moon likes the waves. I don't think the moon really has any bearing on, I mean, the moon affects the tide. It doesn't affect the waves, the wind that makes the waves. So the moon, you know, did two separate things. Now the broken wing is mended, you must go back to the sky while I shall remain in my hole. Looking at things is like stealing things. And I mean, I don't actually, that's not a statement. I mean, most of the statements I make are not actually reflections of my true feelings about the world. I'm just saying it to figure out what it means. Um, I mean, I think most people get that when they, they look at my work, that I don't actually think that. Either I'm playing the part of somebody saying something or more to the point, I'm just saying it. Don't know, I'm just going to say it. Say it and think about what it means afterwards and try not to get yourself cancelled in the process. <laughs> Maybe don't say it on social media, whatever it is. One of the recurring images in this show is clouds. There's a lot of clouds. I think it's because they're quite satisfying to paint. I don't, I don't really think then very good representations of clouds as in, you know, clouds in the sky. I wish the clouds were not there, but they are, and I must accept it. Again, another statement encouraging the viewer to accept the nature of the image. But again, it's a given, you know, it's not going to change. You can't change it. Acceptance is a big theme for me. I mean, it's, a, you know, very much a part of one's coming to an under agreeable understanding about one's life is acceptance of things. And also, ergo, the uh, 
you know, things that aren't acceptable that can be changed, need to be changed. However, all the works in this exhibition cannot be changed, will not be changed, must be accepted as they are, whether you like it or not. You don't have to like it. That's one of the main things, main misunderstandings about art, about contemporary art in particular, that people seem to make is that you have to like it. You actually don't have to like it. And uh, yeah, I think it would be weird if you did like everything. You can only ever like about 5% of art. If you like more than 5%, well, that's probably good. And it's good, it's helpful if you're like an art critic or something. But yeah, generally as a punter, you know, a person who goes to see exhibitions, I'd say like one in 20 artworks that I see. And I think there are, there are probably about 60 works in this exhibition, which means that you're probably like about three of them. That's good, that's all right. I like that one, that one, and the one in the other end. 